so glad that you're in the service today. I do mean that authentically, and uh, welcome those online as well, as, and uh, for joining us and being a part of this. And uh, especially with so much sickness, it's kind of great, nice that you can join us online, right from your bedroom in your pajamas, wherever wherever you might be. And uh, but great to have you with us as well. Last week we started a new message series called Build Strong. I thought about maybe having one of those body suits on and flexing my muscles and stuff like that to sort of kick off the, the message series, but I thought, I decided, nah, that'll be way too much of a distraction to everybody, all right? And so, but we are into this series called Build Strong, and the reason we're into this series as we begin a brand new year, 2023, in case you didn't know what year it was, uh, 2023. As we start a new year, I, my desire for our church family, my desire for you personally, is that you would grow stronger spiritually, that you would grow stronger in your spirit, that you would grow stronger physically and financially, that you would grow stronger in the relationships of your life, that your marriage and your relationship with your, your children, your grandchildren would be better and healthier and stronger. But for all of that to happen, it doesn't happen accidentally. It happens very intentionally when you begin to purposely begin to build strong and strong things in your life. And so in that first message, which was only meant to be one message, but it's actually last week was 1A, today is 1B, because I decided I'm not hurrying through this. I'm going to take my time and we're going to walk through this and we're going to talk about what it takes to build strong and in particularly building a strong spirit. I can tell you honestly that from the pandemic and everything's going on is that there are people who are crushed in their spirit. There are people who are struggling to stay strong within their spirit. That's why the very first message of this series is focusing on the spirit that is within us, just and whether we're encouraged, and, uh, and there is so much talk today about struggling with mental health and, and all the things, and, I, and all that connects back to the Spirit. But I think we need to build strong in our spirits. And we're going to touch on some other areas, but last week I jumped into that because I want us to build strong in our spirit. Last week I talked about, and I highlighted, and I'm not going to re-preach my message. You ever, you ever get those pastors that re-preach their message? Well, I'm not going to do that. Even though I'm going to tell you my three points, I'm not going to re-preach it. All right? But last week we looked at the life of Samson, and Samson displayed three attitudes that weakened his spirit. Samson was someone who was caught up in self-indulgence. He was caught up in resentment to everybody he encountered. He had unforgiveness in his life. He was always blaming someone else for his problems. And he was careless. He was careless in living out his faith and his Nazarite vow. And I talked last week about if we do the same thing, it will weaken our spirit. Well, today I want to talk about three habits that you can have in your life that will strengthen your spirit. These habits are not rocket science. Matter of fact, the Word of God has been consistent on these habits from, from the beginning of time and even beyond that because they come from the Lord. And these habits are just so important that if we practice these habits, we will be strengthened within our spirit. And so, so as we look at this, I just, again, want to remind us that people, people don't crash and burn in their life. People don't walk over that proverbial cliff in their life overnight. In all of our lives, it begins with small slippages, the small things that begin to trip us up. We let things begin to slide, and next thing you know, we wake up one day and we say, what happened? What happened? I can't believe so-and-so is no longer following the Lord. So-and-so doesn't want to read their Bible. What happened? How does that happen to somebody? And it doesn't happen right away. It happens from the small slippages that take place in our life. And we wake up and we go, what happened? All of a sudden, people lose their credibility. All of a sudden, people begin to say, what happened to my reputation? People say, what happened to my marriage? What happened to my ministry? And folks, all of those things crash and burn from small baby steps. That's how it starts. And so as we move into 2023, when we get to the end of this year, I do not want you 
to be counted among those who are sort of in the ash bin of life. I want you to be strong and mighty in the things of God. I want you to have that strength in you that comes from the Lord. But we need to do some things if we're going to have that. They tell us that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and that's absolutely true. I grew up on the farm, and my father constantly, as we were trying to haul out rocks and sometimes haul a lot of different things, my dad would look over the chain that we used time and time again, and he said, oh, that ch the chain's not going to do it. Get the other one. And, and we would look at him, what's wrong with you? It's just, it's a chain. And, and he would know, he would see the, the weak link in it, and he would know that it wouldn't, wouldn't fulfill its purpose. And the same is true for us, that we are only as strong as the weakest link within our lives. And so the question I have for you this morning is, what is the weak link in your life today? What is the weak link in your life? And you say, well, I, Pastor, I, I don't know what it is. Then my response to you, with all the grace that I have, is you better find out. You better find out. Because we are only as strong as the weakest link in our lives. So what's the weak link in your life? If you're going to be stronger in 2023 or by the end of 2023, you need to really overcome that weakness and, that, and, and begin to be strong in your life. You are only as strong as what you're committed to. And if you are chipping away at your daily commitment... And as you're, if you're chipping away at the things that make you strong, then you're only going to get weaker and weaker every day. And I don't want that for you. The Bible on this particular subject is, is very blunt. It really is. Matter of fact, today as I touch on some things, I don't mean to be difficult. I don't mean to be, I, hopefully I don't even sound harsh in doing it. But at the same time, I want to be true to the Word of God. And the Bible is very blunt about this whole idea of us being weakened in our spirit. In Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 20 says, You will have to live with the consequences of everything you say. But I would even remind you there are other verses within the Bible that says you not only live with the consequences of what you say, you will have to live with the consequences of, of what you do. You'll have to live with the consequences of everything you think. All right? And, and, uh, and so as we begin to look at the weak links in our life and how we can overcome it, how we become stronger, we need to recognize that the Bible is going to hold us accountable for how we have lived our life. Sometimes we think, oh, well, you know what? I can let it slip. You know, it's just a white lie. It's just a, I'm just stealing a little bit of things. No one's going to pay attention to it. My faith can handle it. I'm a Christian. You know, I love the Lord. But we let things slip. And we think we're immune to being held accountable. But the Bible reminds us that we're going to have to live and die with the consequences of what we do, think, say, and so on. But today I want to encourage you and I want to give you three habits that will help you not to live that way, but to live mighty in the Lord. To live with strength so that you don't have to get up every day and go, oh, do I have to live this day, you can get up and go, I want to be, this is exciting day ahead. Now, mind you, not every day is like that. In our household, Helen and I have been married 35 years, and I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I wake up talking. I wake up, and first thing I say, hey, good morning, honey, how are you? I'll go get the coffee on, and do you want something to eat? As soon as my head's off the pillow, yak, 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 yak. All right? I know that. That's the, that's the way I am. And Helen, I know what she's going to do. She's going to go. Because she's not a talker in the morning. Matter of fact, it's mid-morning. You might want to call then. All right? But, but you know what? We have our habits in our life. And, and as we look at our habits, we need to recognize that these habits, whatever they are, they can really help us or they can hinder us. And so for me, I'm one of these people that... I'm, I'm, I believe God has great things for us, and, and I'm very positive, and I'm, I'm outspoken. I talk a lot because I believe it with all my heart, and I believe that when we get to the end of 2023, that if you practice these habits I'm going to give you, you will be strong. Matter of fact, at the end of my message today, I'm going to give you the Pepsi challenge. How many of you remember that commercial? Okay, the Pepsi challenge? You know, I dare you. Try it. 
You know, try it for 30 days or whatever the, the challenge was. The Pepsi challenge. And at the end of this message, I'm going to give you the Pepsi challenge. All right? I'm bringing it on right now. And it's that these things, if you practice these habits, then you will be strong. Each of the habits that I'm going to share with you, I'm going to share with you the reason you should do it. I'm going to share the routine that should be behind it. And I'm going to share with you the results that will come into your life because you practice it. So let's jump into these three things, all right? The first habit, if you want to grow spiritually strong in 2023, and, and again, this is not rocket science. If you've been around the church, you've probably heard this, all right? You need to spend time with God every day. Wow, isn't that shocker? That, that is so new. That is so new. You need to spend time with God every day. And so as we think about growing stronger, I want to remind us that that strength does not come from spending time on Facebook. That time comes from spending time with God in a daily quiet time with God, reading your Bible, praying, maybe singing songs of praise, whatever it might be. But you do it, and you do it to the Lord. And so you grow stronger by spending time with God every day. So my advice to you is, Get time with God every single day of your life. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to grow spiritually. Your spirit will not grow stronger. Matter of fact, not only will you not grow stronger, but if you're not spending time with the Lord every day, you're actually growing weaker. You don't stay still and say, oh boy, I'm here spiritually, but I'm going to take the next couple of months off with the Lord, then come back, I'm just where I was before. Oh, no, you're not. If you're not moving forward, you're falling back. You're growing weaker, and Satan knows that. And so spending time with God every day, we call this our quiet time, a daily quiet time. And, and again, we teach about it here at Spotlight Church in our class 201. We talk about how you do that and how you start out in doing that, how you practice it. It's a time when you read your Bible, you pray, and you be quiet before the Lord. Let's see, there's a Bible verse that says, Be still and know that I am God. We need to spend time with God every day. And so let me give you the reason why you should do that. Why should I have a daily quiet time? Psalm 25, verse 4 says, Show me the path that I should go, O Lord. Point out the right road for me to walk. Psalm 24, verse 4. You need a daily quiet time because you and I both need guidance in our life. I don't Sometimes... Things come across my desk or across my pathway. Folks, I don't have the answers. I don't know what to do. But I know someone who does. And I find that when instead of, instead of calling six of my best pastor friends, if I stop and I spend time with the Lord and say, Lord, I don't know what to do. Can you help me? Do you know what? He guides you. He shows you the path. He does that you should take. So having a daily quiet time, the reason you do that is because you and I, we need guidance from God. We need to remind ourselves that we need that guidance. And if we're not spending that daily quiet time with the Lord, then we're out there on our own. We're out there doing things our own way, on our own path, at our own pace, in our own direction, if we're not getting daily guidance from the Lord. And so the reason to spend time with God is you and I I don't know about you. Let me speak for myself. I need to be guided. I need help. And I remember as a young parent raising our kids, there were many times when I thought, Lord, I'm not going to survive this. But it's amazing how the Lord guides you and gives you wisdom and he gives you counseling. Isn't that why the Holy Spirit is here? To be our counselor and to guide us into all truth? Yeah. To show us the way we have a God who didn't just set us adrift and leave us alone, but he want, he's with us, and he wants us to spend time with him. And so the reason you do that is you and I need guidance. The routine is, is that you know, we need to get alone every day and spend time with the Lord. The Bible says in Luke chapter 5, verse 16, speaking of the life of Jesus, it says, Jesus often. Now circle that word often, because it means habitual. It's really what the scripture is saying. Jesus made it a habit to withdraw to a lonely place and pray. It was his habit that was in his life to spend time with his father. 
And if Jesus had to practice that, I think I have to do it. And so we need to make that a habit. And in other places, the Bible says that Jesus withdrew to a lonely place, as was his custom. And so Jesus spent time with his father. It was his habit. Even before he went to the cross, he went to the garden to pray and, and said, Lord, help me. Can, can this cup pass from me? Can, can I avoid this or do I need to go through it? And his father re reminded him how he needed to take that weight upon him and become that sacrifice for all of us. You need to get in a place, I need to get in a place where we can be alone with God and be quiet with him so that we can pray and read our Bibles. All right, so when we get to the end of the service and I give you the Pepsi challenge, my Pepsi challenge to you is, will you spend time with God every day? Maybe start out five minutes, just five minutes. Can you give him five minutes before you rush off out to the, into your day? You'll be amazed how that five turns into 10, into 15, and you'll enjoy spending time with the Lord. So make it a daily practice in your life. The result that will come into your life, I think, is found as, and given to us in, in John 15, verse 7. He says, if you remain in me, and my re words remain in you, and there's that quiet time right there, because you got to take time out to let his words remain in you, spend time in his word, then you will ask for anything you wish, and you shall have it. You know what? That's not a vending machine promise. That's a God who says, you come and spend time with me. You get to know my heart, I know your heart, and together we will ask for the things that truly matter. One of the keys to answer prayer today is spending time alone with God. It's amazing how many people today want God to be that vending machine. They want him to spit out the answers, but they never take time to really have commune with him, to walk with him, and to spend that daily time with him. I know I sound like an old-time preacher when I, when I talk about this, but you know what? From the beginning of time, nothing has changed. God still wants to spend time with us. Nothing has changed. Call it a daily time with, with God. We used to call it a dog, D-A-W-G, you know, daily time with God. You call it whatever you want to call it. Wear the wristband. You do whatever you want to do. But spend time every day with your Heavenly Father. And you will begin to grow stronger in your life. You will be stronger by the end of 2023. So habit number one. Matter of fact, I would say it's the number one habit that you need to develop in 2023. is spending daily time with God. Get a time when you listen to God, get in his word and talk to him. And that will be your number one habit that will help you to grow in your spirit. Okay, you're with me on that one? All right, so get ready for that Pepsi challenge. All right. Pepsi ought to pay me for all the um, <laughs> spots I'm giving them today. Number two habit that we need to practice in 2023 if we want to grow stronger in our spirit and, and is we need to get together with believers every week. Isn't that, isn't that wild? We're here today. You're, you're, you're spot on. You're getting, to, you're getting together with other believers every week. But let me talk about that a little bit further. Again, as we get together with believers every single week, here at Spotlight Church, that's why we encourage small groups or grow groups. It's because if you're going to grow spiritually strong in 2023, you cannot do it as a lone wolf. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 says, Let us not give up the habit of meeting together. Instead, let us encourage each other. For me, the reason I love two particular things, and we'll go to the book of Acts here in a moment, where they met in the temple and they met from house to house. They didn't just choose one or the other. They did both, by the way. All right? They did both. And so before I get to that, though, for me, I love small groups and I love Sunday worship because if, uh, especially even during the pandemic, you know, there was a few Sundays where just Helen and I, and I think at that time Pastor Andrew was with us and and we had the, the few of us would come in here, and it was so lonely. I almost felt like, and here's an illustration that sticks out in my mind, and, 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 and I felt like a, a piece of coal, and, I'll, and this will explain it, is that for me, it's kind of like a fire. And in a fire, you have all the coals that are in there at the base of the fire that are hot, red hot, white hot, whatever they might be. 
But if you take one of those coals out of the fire and you set it off by itself, it grows cold and it loses its heat. Hear me when I say this. I think Satan has set us up for thinking that church is not really that important. That spending time together is not really that important. Why would I want to go and spend time with some cranky old people? All right? Even young people. people. Cranky young people as well. All right? Why would I want to go and spend time with them? You know, their breath smells. I mean, no, there's nobody like that. But why would I want to do that? The reason you do that is because when you are off by yourself, you lose your fire. You lose your heat. You lose, you think, something is missing in your life. And so, but if you take that coal and you put it back in the fire, it gets hot again. And it serves its purpose again. We live in a day and age where people are taught that church doesn't really matter. And I don't mind church online, I know. But you know what? It's kind of like watching a fireplace on TV, right? You get to see everything, but you don't feel the warmth. It's not enough. It's not enough. And we need to be reminded today that the reason that we must meet together, whether it be from house to house or whether it be in large gatherings or in the temple, this is what we are today and we're in the temple, then the reason we do that is because by ourselves we will grow cold and lose our passion for the things of God. I think Satan is setting us up. A lot of people say, oh, you don't really need to go to church. You don't need to be a part of your organized religion. And my favorite line in that, I'll say, oh, you'll love us because we're disorganized. <laughs> but you do need to be a part of the body. Come on, folks. We need to spend time together. We may not be perfect, and there's nobody perfect. But we need each other. And so the reason that we need to spend time together every week is we need to realize the power of what fellowship does by yourself you're you're going to grow cold you're going to grow weak you're going to grow wimpy i honestly believe that you will not have the spiritual strength you need you're not going to have what you need to deal with the challenges of life but together you can be like iron that sharpens iron and help each other to stay warm when the when the challenges of life come along so what's the routine that's where Acts chapter 5 and verse 42 comes in. It says they met day after day. Can you believe that? They met every day. Boy, I think I'm doing well if I can get in, you know, a small group once a week and a church service on the weekend. But those fanatics, they met every day. Hallelujah. They met every day in the temple courts and from house to house. Uh, we'll start, we're going to start at her house. All right? <laughs> And so, but we need, to, we need to be reminded that they valued fellowship. And fellowship had a power to it that was something that was given to us from God. And so and we need to be reminded that if we're going to be spiritually strong, I think we need to remind ourselves about our large weekend gatherings. Yes, we can do that, but I think we need to be connected to a small group. I think we need to be connected to a small group. So let me move on. So the result is, is when we begin to look at believers connecting with believers every week, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 9 and 10 says this. Uh, not Ephesians, but Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And I'm just going to pull part of it out. It says, two are better off than one. Okay, here's the result of us meeting together. Two are better off than one because together they're more effective. If one falls down, the other can help him up. There are going to be times in your life in 2023 when a rogue wind is going to come your way. There's going to be a time when a storm's going to hit your life. It may be big, it may be small, but hold on. Storms of life come and go, for in this life you will have trials and tribulation. And, the, and when those storms come, do you have somebody in your life that you can call on? Do you have somebody that you've made contact with and built a relationship with so that when those storms come, you can lean on them and count on them? So my question this morning is, who in your life would show up right now if you had a disaster? 
I pray that Spotlight Church would be more than just a gathering of people. I pray that we'd be a fellowship that would show up for one another in times of disaster. But you don't build people like that in your life unless you take time to cultivate that. Real relationships take time to be nurtured and cultivated. And that is why the early church spent time together every day. And so when, when someone was being thrown to the lions or whenever a challenge was happening, they could lean on one another as a body. Again, I think Satan has set us up today where we think it's okay to be alone and not be connected. I think it's one of the biggest lies that's being perpetrated on us as a church. We not only need a daily quiet time with God, but we also need that weekly time with one another. We need to get together with believers every week, and we need to get together with God every day. So this morning, I want to encourage you to think about the habit in your life. How are you connecting with other believers in the week? Or are you just sort of doing your own thing? Finally this morning, and this is the tough one, all right? So kind of pre prepare yourself for this, and, and uh, let's see. I, I, let's see, I got four or five minutes to, to cover this, and I'm going to run, all right? But here's the tough one. And the tough one is not only do you spend time with God every day and spend time with people every, every week through... Um, through temple gatherings and small group gatherings. But finally, you also, if you want to grow stronger within your spirit, you need to give faithfully in your tithing to the Lord. Now, in my day, when I first started going to church, is we taught that you give a tithe to God every weekend. But some people say, well, I, I get paid once a month. I'm, you know, I'm, I do online, and I know all those things. But I think the principle is, giving your tithe to God. And so if you want to grow stronger within your life, I think tithing is a habit of returning, not think, but tithing is a habit of returning the first 10% of my income back to God. And the reason I do that is I give the first part of my money on the first part of the day of the week, that's what the Bible tells us, to tell Jesus that he has first place within my life. Tithing is really just a symbol. Because God doesn't need our money. What's he going to do with loonies and toonies? All right? It's really more about your heart and my heart and who has first place in our life. Because the reality is, until our, even our money has first place in our life, then we're just kidding ourselves. God doesn't really have first place in our lives. God wants to be first in all things. Isn't, ooh, that, isn't that a sore spot? That's a difficult spot. And so I want to remind us that if we're going to grow strong in 2023, it also means, about, means dealing with the way we handle our money. The first part of my tithe goes on the first day of the week, or I'm not being legalistic about it whenever you're able to do it. But ultimately, it's as an act of worship. That's really the most important thing. Let me stop here. I love technology. I love the fact that we can give our tithe. You know, if you wake up on a Tuesday morning at 4 o'clock in the morning because you can't sleep or you had to make a run to the washroom, maybe it pops in your mind, oh, I should, I should give some money to Spotlight Church. That's always great. I don't care what time of day that happens. Um, <laughs> but I think something sometimes is lost. Sometimes when we can just flip open our phones and and send electronic transfer off. I, I kind of feel like, so, my, I'm, I'm sounding old school here, <laughs> but I feel like something's lost because I love coming in and I love just making that donation, that tithe, as a part of my act of worship. As I drop it in, even did it this morning, as I drop in the envelope, a part of me says, Lord, you have been so faithful to me, I really don't mind giving this to you. But sometimes when I do it online, I just do it, and wow, there you go, and move on. And sometimes we miss out on the teaching and the understanding that it's a part of your worship. It's a part of things, saying thank you back to God and saying, God, I know you don't need this 10%. You let me have 90% to do whatever I want with. All you're asking is 10. I gladly give it to say thank you 
for your faithfulness. Sometimes in our habits today, it's easy to forget that it's a part of your worship. Now, I know you can pull out your phone and you can give and say, Lord, as I give this, I just ask that you would bless this gift, use it to make Spotlight stronger so they can reach the community and reach the world. I know you can have that spirit of the act of worship. There's nothing wrong with that. But the point I'm trying to make this morning is giving of your tithe is not about just paying another bill. It's about an act of worship. It's about putting God first in your life. The Bible says we need to tithe because wherever our treasure is, there our heart is also. If I, if I can't give God the first part of my money, then I'm really not putting him first in my life, isn't it? And that's a, that's, I know it's a difficult thing, but it's true. I'm just pretending that he is. Until I deal with my treasure, until I deal with my money, then it's really all of that working together to remind me that God needs to be first place in my life. In the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23, I love the simple verse says the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your life. That's it. That's it. So my question for you this morning, is God first in your life? And does the way you use your money show it? Does your wallet show it? Does your giving show it? The routine, I'm flexible on it. In the early church, every time they went to the house of the Lord, they, they gave of their tithe. I realize we have different habits and different patterns today. I'm not being legalistic about it. But the most important thing for you this morning as your pastor is that as you give, it's not about just giving to Spotlight Church. You're giving to the Lord. It's a part of your worship. It's a part of saying, Lord, not only are you first place in, in my day, first place in, in things I do, but I, you're also first place in my giving. So this morning, I want to encourage you. Encourage you, like Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 says, bring your whole tithe into the storehouse. Not 5%, not 2%, but the whole tithe. Give. And in Scripture, it says, test me in this. And this is where the Pepsi challenge comes in here, too. Test me in this, says the Lord, and see if I won't open the floodgate to heaven and pour out so much blessing that you won't have enough room for it. Over 35 years, and as a believer, over 40 years, I have given faithfully of my tithe. I can tell you without hesitation, and God has been so incredibly faithful. So faithful. And I stand with a great cloud of witnesses to testify that fact. Some people today say, you know what, I, can't, I won't make ends meet if I don't if I don't, you know, take that money and give it someplace else. Here's where the Pepsi challenge comes in. I dare you. The Lord says, test me in this. I didn't say that. Matter of fact, I would never say that. <laughs> but the Lord said it. Test me in this and see if I won't open the floodgates of heaven for you. Today, as we begin to think about building stronger in 2023, these are three habits, not rocket science, not new but they are absolutely crucial that we practice. This morning, my Pepsi challenge to you is in 2023, where is your weak link and what are you going to do about it? I'm asking you to take that challenge and to think about growing stronger, think about that daily time with God, think about spending time each week with other believers, whether in a small group or in church, and the value of going to church. Think about those habits. What is your weak link, and where do you need to strengthen your life? Let's stand together this morning. Lord, I'm thankful for this day, and, and Lord, you know how I wrestled with this message, but yet I know, Lord, that it's not about how I feel about it, but it's about your truth. And so, Lord, today, I just ask that for every single person that is here, that, God, you would help them to go ahead and begin to take that challenge, to go ahead and begin to spend time with you every day, maybe get into a small group uh, every week, and, and, Lord, even begin to think about giving their tithe to you, Lord. Lord, that challenge is between you and them. Father, 
at the end of 2023, strengthen us. Help us to be stronger within our spirit. Help us to practice those habits that can make us stronger. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.